I think women in 18th century Philadelphia, like women today, I think definitely think about what they wear and absolutely express themselves in what they wear. And in the 18th century, it was one of the places where women did have a voice um, and where they did have an opinion. And recently there's been a lot of scholarship that sort of negates the old idea that women just bought what, just wore what their husbands bought for them and that Anne Willing, for example, her husband would go to England and would come back with a piece of silk and sort of say, here, honey, you'll look great in this and here's this dress. But there's been a lot of scholarship done lately by myself included, where if you actually go back and look at a lot of these letters and a lot of the account books, the men who are in England, for example, often are writing back to women in their family and saying things like, I know you want me to buy a silk, but I'm definitely not going to buy this silk until you send me very specific instructions. And so I can just picture that they're you know, fearful that the woman will be unhappy and that they will be sort of, they'll hear it when they get home, right? If it's, if it's a yellow silk and they really wanted a blue silk. And you have a lot of examples of um, merchants, Thomas Willing for one, writing that the women in his family very specifically want this color silk and that pattern silk and they don't want this, so don't send that. So I think clothing is a way in which women very much asserted their individuality and very much asserted their own identity and how they wanted to be perceived. Um, and of course it was also very competitive. Um, again, I think not dissimilar to today. Um, I think if we think about clothing, it's a way to, for us to understand people in the past is maybe not so different from how we are because you know people judge each other walking down the street and you know people often think about, think that they understand something about a person based on their clothing. And I think in the 18th century, the same sort of individual cultural phenomenon was going on.